In today's video, I'm going to show you about capacitors, specifically for uh, car audio uses. This one here that I have in front of me is a 3.2 Farad standard 12 to 24 volt DC powered capacitor. So this one here has just a standard uh, dual post on the top, one for negative, one for your positive. It also has an LED with an LCD readout. So it's that's, the LED is just there for bling bling to make it look nice. This here is going to give you the actual surface voltage readout so that way it looks nice and as well as has a functionality of telling you what the voltage is which is a very cool feature because in car audio when you have something like this capacitor installed it's typically because you have a huge amplifier drawing a ton of amperage and you're worried about your voltage dropping so your amps don't start clipping, cutting off, going into protect, diagnostics and the like and causing all kinds of chaos. So this one here is only a 3 farad cap. It's not, you know, the biggest, latest, greatest thing in the world. But however, this is probably more than the average person actually has. So I'm, I've chosen this to use my tutorial um, this time around. So let me show you the proper way to, to handle these caps, proper way to, to charge them, use them, and discharge them all in one shot. And it won't take me too long, and I hope you'll learn a whole lot from what I show you. This is the way I've always done it. This is the way it's always worked for me. Um, to the best of my knowledge, this is right by the MECB you know, certification guide that I've always used and taught my whole life. So I'm just going to pass it on to you the same way it was taught to me. Now over here, I know you can't see everything I'm doing because I have the camera zoomed in, but I have two wires here. These two wires are coming from my power supply which is located across the table. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect the negative side of my power supply onto the cap and I'm going to do the positive side. Now you can see it's starting to bounce around, the LEDs are coming on. So that 13.6, that's telling you we got 13.6 volts DC current going to this capacitor right now. Now these capacitors do not have a third terminal. A lot of capacitors, um, I don't know if the one you're working with does or does not, most of them do not. However, some of them do have a smaller terminal, which would be located on the top, typically right around here. It would be a smaller terminal. Similar to how an amplifier has a remote turn-on lead, a capacitor would have a similar type of feature. Those are for more advanced capacitors that use them as well as not just caps, but power distribution blocks, you know, power distribution centers and all kinds of other fancy stuff. But like I said, this here is a real straightforward meat and potatoes cap. None of that stuff means anything. This cap is going to turn itself off when the voltage drops. After this thing sits stagnant for a little while, the cap is just going to turn itself off and the lights are going to go off by themselves. That's the way they're supposed to work. If you have a cap and it's not happening, you might have a defective cap. Now you can see, um, this video has only been running for, you know, under a minute now. The LCD has gone out by itself. This, this capacitor we know for a fact is working properly. Now, the first thing I want to show you is how to charge a capacitor properly. And the good news is that you've already learned it. All you have to do is just what I've done. Connect it directly to your, to your um, system. After the fuse from your battery, if you have an auxiliary battery or a solenoid or whatever's going on in the trunk of your vehicle where this capacitor is located, you want to have a fuse going directly to this. From here, you want it connected straight to your amplifier without a fuse between here and there. Reason being is because when your amplifier is pulling and drawing the current, what you want to happen is current is going to be like people. It's going to follow the path of least resistance. So you're going to want the amplifier to draw it from the capacitor before it goes down the long line going to your battery, causing your alternator to work hard, making your lights blink causing a lot of problems and making the electrical system overall not function as well as it would without this capacitor that we've added in the first place. Which is the reason why you bought it, right? Makes sense. So, with that said, that's the right way to connect it, power it, and wire it. Now, I'll show you something else. When you disconnect the power, I'm going to take my test light, this here is my, my test light, <clears throat> which lucky for me has an auxiliary ground, so that way I can use this here, put my test light on there, and you can see that when I touch it, my light is coming on, the voltage meter is coming on because it's, no, it's sensing activity. You can also notice that the voltage has gone down from where it was, 13.6, now we're at 10.32, it's going down by about, you know, 
uh, what is that? I guess about 500 milliamps at a shot. You can see it's going 9.327. It's steadily going down. This this capacitor is actually discharging very rapidly. Now. This last part of my video, what I wanted to explain to everybody is about discharging these capacitors. This is not the right way to do it. Just to sit there and let the lights blink and hope to God that it goes out to zero. Do yourself a favor. Go get yourself a cheap light like I have here. This is just a regular old Xenon bulb I had lying around. Take that. Disconnect it from your system, which I'm sure you would be because you're removing it and not using it. Connect it to your cap and just let it be. Just let it sit there. When this thing is totally dead, leave it on there for another five or ten minutes. Just just let it be there. Let this thing completely fully drain because God forbid these capacitors can store energy for a good long time. I mean it's only DC current. It's never gonna shock you to death. Nothing crazy is gonna happen. But if you didn't do this and this thing had a really strong charge and you did not treat this capacitor properly, <clears throat> two things can happen. One, you can really hurt the effectiveness of this capacitor when you do reinstall it and if you leave it for a long time and not reinstall it quickly that can be even more detrimental to it or also you could somehow if you had this and you didn't take the terminals off and the actual wires and you had this thing touching onto something like a piece of metal that they could both make a connection and dead short across you could start arcing either the wires weld them to your car or cause this thing to actually start blowing up and I've seen all the goo come right out of these things cause a big old mess. I mean, all worse can happen. So when you have a capacitor, treat it with respect, treat it right, and it will respect you in, in return. And just as a quick note, if you don't have the um, extra light bulb like I have, of course I have tons of stuff like this, you know, so for me it's not a big deal. However, not everybody does. If your capacitor did come with one of these, which, if it will cooperate, is it just a standard little resistor. If you take this, and just cross it from one terminal to the other. Eventually, and I mean eventually, this thing will discharge in this respect as well. So if that's what you have to work with, it's okay. Just understand it's going to take a very long time. Um, how long it's going to take, you'd have to use Ohm's law to figure it out. You'd have to figure out the resistance divided by the voltage to come out with the amperage. I mean, something like this, a 300 ohm resistor. I mean, this thing would be like 300 milliamps. It would take like days for this thing to fully discharge this capacitor but you know it is what it is that's what it is um, and if you ever just needed to know what your capacitor is running at or what amperage is coming through it of course you could always just use a, a standard digital multimeter like I'm using for uh, right now mine is set on uh, DC voltage so I'll show you something really quick with this take that off And you can see that number ain't changed. We have zero DC volts. But if you ever wanted to know what your amperage was, just on a side note, which has nothing to do with capacitor, um, stuff like I'm talking about in this video, just as a little freebie, little tip, you could actually just take one probe from your positive, um, disconnect your wire, or, or and, and connect it to here. Put this on here, turn your amplifier or, or your system on, and look at this on the amperage and you can see how many amps this thing is going through this uh, this wire from your cap so that's a good way to use if you want to formulate it with Ohm's law again to figure out if the um, the amount of joules and the Farad capacitance that your capacitor in your system is rated for if it's good enough for what you actually need it for which is another good thing it's all mathematical I know it's boring but that's what I do I try to enlighten people and educate so there you go that's my my take on the cat and caps so enjoy See you next time.